here is another question that I want to find a combinatorial proof, right? So prove that summation, that's identity, right? Summation k is equal to 1 to n. k into n choose k whole square is equal to n times 2n minus 1 choose n minus 1. <coughs> so summation k is equal to 1 to n. k times n choose k whole square is equal to n times 2n minus 1 choose n minus 1. Of course, you can find an algebraic proof. And I would say that, you know, you can try to find an algebraic proof. It's going to be a little difficult, I think. But still, you can find it. But uh, it's going to be a uh, little cumbersome to work out with this thing. But try, to, try it and uh, try to find out why this must be equal. <coughs> but then we want to find a combinatorial proof. So what is going to be our combinatorial proof? So think about uh, your, I mean, you know, finding a proof for yourself and uh, after spending some time you come back here and then continue okay i recommend that you think about it because unless you think about this it is going to be uh, difficult to solve questions because the the subject of combinatorics is such that like you know you will see lots of uh, problems each of them the solution is kind of easy once you see it but you know till you see it uh, coming up with the idea, right? How to, how to, you know, frame this, right? It's going to be uh, uh, tricky. You, know, you need to like strike the, you know, idea in your mind before you can answer. You know, it's not like, you know, uh, a standard procedure because each question has a slightly different flavor, which, you know, affects the way you know you have to think. So. Uh, you need to develop a habit of thinking uh, on this so and that is why i i am uh, asking repeatedly again and again that you uh, uh, think on this before you proceed so what is the combinatorial proof i am going to give you here is it so what is on the right hand side okay i have n and 2n minus 1 choose n minus 1 so i can immediately see that 2n minus 1 choose n minus 1 is Choosing n minus 1 members from a 2n minus 1 element set, right? So basically forming an n minus 1 element subset of a 2n minus 1 element set. Now <clears throat> I am going to multiply that with n with n, which means that you know there is some choice involved, right? By our product rule. There was some choice of n persons, right? N you know, distinct persons were. We are able to choose, and uh, uh, that is independent of the choice of the n minus one guys from the two n minus one guys. So, what I am going to do is uh, the following. Okay, I am going to say that there are, let us say, uh, let us say, men and women, or boys and girls. Okay, maybe you can it's boys and girls. And uh, there are, let's say, n boys and there are n girls. Okay. So we have 2n persons here, n boys and n girls. Now from this, I want to form a, let's say, a club or a committee, whatever you want, call it. So I want to form a club with uh, let us say n persons okay i want to select a club with n people inside and i want to make sure that the the, the club has a let us say a president and the president is a lady it's a girl okay they usually do a better job right as president than the boys so therefore we will choose uh, <clears throat> a lady president and then we will have remaining uh, members so now we can see what is on the right side right because from the n girls i can choose one president for the club in n possible ways right 
So I have uh, n possibilities to choose the president, right? President. Now, my requirement for the club was that the president must be a girl, right? But then the remaining there is no condition. So therefore, I have once I once I choose the president, the remaining members, you know, president is already a member. So remaining n minus one members I have to choose, right? But the n minus one can be any of the people. So therefore, I can choose any of the uh, n minus one person from uh, the two n minus one remaining people, right? uh, except for this one girl. There is n boys and n minus one girls. So out of the two n minus one persons, I can choose n minus one members, including including the empty set. Right? Only there is a president, nobody else, right? That is allowed, right? No, uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I my mistake. So yeah, so uh, I I I choose the president and I select n minus one members, depending on what is n, right? Yeah, unless n is one, right? It's not empty. So you you choose. Uh, n minus one element subset of the two n minus one set. So you select these guys in two n minus one choose n minus one possible ways, and then uh, since the choices of the president and the remaining n minus one guys were independent, right? The number of choices were independent. The choices are not independent, right? Uh, we could multiply them, so I get n into two n minus one choose n minus one. Now the claim is that the left hand side counts the precisely the same thing. So why does the left hand side count precisely the same thing? <coughs> so what happens on the left hand side? I have summation k is equal to 1 to n, k into n choose k whole square. Okay. So let, let me count this, uh, you know, the president forming, uh, club forming business in a uh, slightly different way. So how, how I am going to count this? So first I will form Uh, the club by selecting k girls from the uh, n possible uh, uh, candidates, right? So I choose k girls from the n possible girls. So I I say that okay, these guys uh, these girls are going to be the members, okay? Now, <clears throat> once I choose the K girls, I will select one of them to be the president because I want a girl to be the president. So therefore, out of the K girls, I have exactly K choices to make one of them as the president. Right? So I choose K, K girls and then select one of them to be president. And uh, this is independent, right? So I choose the K girl first and then independently, Whichever k girls I choose, one of the k I can choose. So there are k choices for that. So k into n choose k ways I can choose the n girls to be in the uh, in the club and then take a uh, select a president. So k into n choose k. Then once I choose the uh, k members for the uh, the lady members, I select the remaining n minus k boys from the uh, n boys, right? So from the remaining n boys, I need to select n minus k boys. But instead of selecting the n minus k boys to be in the club, I select the k guys who are not going to be in the club and throw them out, right? That is the same choice I am making, right? So I make the choice of k members who are not going to be in the club, throw them out, and then select the remaining n minus k guys to be in the club. So this is a way I can form a club with n minus k boys and k girls and one of the as the president. But this can be any of the case, right? K can be one, k can be two, etc. K can be n, and each of them give distinct clubs. So therefore, the number of ways to form the club is summation n choose k into k into n choose k, which is summation k into n choose k whole square okay i should erase this right so but now this is all possible ways it can happen that there is a lady president 
and there is uh, the remaining members were chosen and, you know all of them appear here so therefore these two quantities must be equal so that is why we have the equality this is equal to n into 2n minus 1 choose n minus 1 so what we counted on the right is precisely what we counted on the left so therefore they must be equal so this is another combinatorial proof <coughs> okay i think i could have written it here now <coughs> so recall the uh, special property that we observed from the meru prasara of pingala right we saw this right this nice property ah uh, not this one where was that yeah i think i i erased it uh, so we had this property, right? That uh, the sum of these guys were this, right? For some of these entire guys will be this. Similarly, some of any of this will be exactly this, right? So using this observation, we can write it in a formal way, right? I asked you to form it yourself. Maybe you have already done it. But uh, if you have not done, here it is. that uh, that uh, <coughs> k choose k plus k plus 1 choose k plus etc n choose k is equal to n plus 1 choose k plus 1 right we just went one step bottom and one step to the right right that is what n plus 1 choose k plus 1 we can see it in the table now right in the in the in the triangle uh, we can see this pattern why this happens to be like this so this is precisely the diagonal that we are looking at and this is the off diagonal entry that we were showing right so <coughs> so this property i want you to prove now combinatorially okay come up with a combinatorial proof why this must be the case <coughs> so this is a homework for you okay let me also write homework in case you want to see the lecture notes so this is homework Okay, now looking back to the anagrams of look, right? We I asked you to solve this yourself if you can. You must have already solved it. You can definitely use brute force to solve it, right? If nothing else works, you can just write down all the words that you can come up with and count it. So if you have uh, counted it, you must have found the answer will be uh, 12. Okay, so what is uh that number so how did we find this okay so maybe you can you know maybe i, I would suggest that you you try to find it out by by uh, by whichever way that you prefer now i am going to use a different method i'm going to or maybe not different but you know a, a method as follows so <clears throat> the reason we were not able to use the uh, product rule was that uh, now when we were having this L O K, there were two O's, right? Now the two O's, when I choose, you know, there will be several orders that I make when I, you know, when I when I put them in different uh, permutations, but some of them could lead out to be the same, right? So which which says that you know the choices were not really independent, right? The choice of one of the O's was interfering with the choice of the other because you know the other comes here or this one comes here is the same exactly so because of that lack of uh, independence we could not use the uh, we could not directly use the product rule if you want to use the product rule directly we should be able to bring in more independence now how can you bring independence so you can bring independence by saying that the o's are actually different okay so i will say that okay i will i will have the o's but l o okay but one of them is O number one, and the one the other one is O number two. <coughs> now, if I mark the O with one O one with always O one O dash or whatever, and the second one with O two always, then the anagrams are going to be exactly four factorial, right? Because all permutations are going to be different. Because you know, if I put, for example, L O okay with o2 here and o1 here this new labeled o you know l o k is different from this 
label yellow okay because this is the first o and this is the second o but where is the second o which is coming first and the first o coming second right so therefore i can count now using product rule so there is going to be 4 factorial which is equal to 24 uh, <coughs> different words with the new o's right the uh, labeled o's but now <coughs> what we observe is that because you know when we remove the labels this one and this one counts to be the same right they they lead, give the same number right same same word so let us see how many over counting we are going to do when i do this five, four factor equal to 24 so we observe that whatever the once you fix the positions of the o's right the four different positions of the o's let's say o o appearing here o1 and o2 if i swap their positions it is not going to make any difference in the word right because when they remove the label they are going to be the same can you do anything else i cannot move the o to somewhere else because that is going to create a different difficulty right it's going to be a different word so <coughs> if i swap there is no problem so when i swap how many possibilities are there either one goes to two and two goes to one or the same thing right there is only two uh, possibilities right so therefore there are exactly two ways to get this o1 o2 or o2 o1 by swapping them and these are the only over counting so therefore every word i counted exactly twice because o1 o2 was coming and o2 o1 was coming in so o1 comes first and o2 comes second or o2 comes first and o1 comes second in the same positions they lead to the same word so therefore i can use the division principle now to say that because I overcounted every word exactly twice, I can divide by 2. So 24 by 2, which is equal to 12. So there are 12 different numbers. And you can verify by finding the 12 different numbers. <coughs> now, okay, we found out the counting for L O O K. Now I give you a bigger word, let's say Mississippi. Can you? Count the word Mississippi and its anagrams. It S S I S S I P P I, right? Mississippi. <coughs> now, <coughs> I think once you get the idea of the other one, this is easy. So, suppose I put labels to make sure that all the words are distinct, right? So, I'll put label, let's say I is occurring one, two, three, four times. I will say I1, I2, I3, and I4. S is appearing four times. So S1, S2, S3, and S4. P is appearing two times. So I will put P1 and P2. Then M is appearing only once. So I will not do anything. If, or if you want fun, you can make it just M1. Doesn't matter. And then <coughs> I say that, okay, I take this. These are distinct words. Uh, distinct letters now. I take all possible permutations of this. I get words right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 words are there so therefore 11 factorial permutations are there <coughs> then i observe that okay but whatever the permutation is given the eyes are occurring four times right but they were all four different eyes because i put labels now if i Switch the position of two of the eyes. It does not make any difference to the word. In fact, if I switch the positions of any of these eyes between themselves, it doesn't make. In fact, if I permute all the eyes within their position, right? So each of them has a fixed position in the word that we created, right? There are 11. I will not draw all the 11. So I will just mark the special positions where I was occurring in the word, maybe, right? It was occurring here, maybe and uh, here here and maybe here okay so the uh, i was appearing here i1 i2 i3 i4 maybe right now 
i you know i you know i don't change the positions of in in the word but between the uh, i1 i2 i3 i4 i can permute them any way i want right so the four i's can be permuted in four factorial different ways right the two uh, o's we could permute in two different ways which is actually two factorial ways so the four i's i can permute in four factorial different ways and each of the four factorial permutations right that i obtained by labeling them we are all going to give the same unlabeled word right where i's are all identical i will get the same word so i have to divide this uh, 11 factorial by 4 factorial to compensate the fact that i over counted all the permutations of i's in uh, in uh, 24 different ways right so i over counted them for factorial many ways similarly there are s uh, for different s's so i can apply the same rule so i can use again division rule to say that okay once i unlabel s all these four factorial will give the same word so 24 of them will give the same so i can divide by four factorial again then i have two different p's so i can divide by two factorial different ways there is only one m so i can divide by one factorial if you want but you know we didn't over count there so therefore i say that 11 factorial by 4 factorial into 4 factorial into 4 factorial different permutations or anagrams of the word mississippi are there now it is very interesting to see that you know 11 factorial can be divided by 4 factorial two times two factorial once and still we will get an integer right because we are counting right counting things right number of anagrams it must be integer there is no other possibility so <clears throat> anyway that is just a remark so this uh leads us to something uh, called multinomial coefficient okay, so what we were looking at now okay we use division principle and multiplication principle only but we can now come up with a slightly more general uh slightly refined tool but uh, more uh, basic uh, still uh, basic so this is called multinomial coefficient so what is the multinomial coefficient let s be a multi set consisting of n1 objects of type 1 like we had here four objects of you know type i right i i i i four of them they are all identical four different s's two different p's etc right n1 objects of type 1 n2 objects of type 2 n3 objects of type 3 etc n k objects of type k And n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus etc. n k is equal to some number n, which is the set S we are looking at. So S is the multi set. It has cardinality n1 plus n2 plus etc. n k, which I call n. And these n elements, right? There are these repetitions n1 of particular one type, n2 of another type, etc. n k of another type. Then the number of linear arrangements or permutations of all of its elements, right? Right, all of these elements because they are identical elements are there, right? Is precisely n factorial by n one factorial into n two factorial into n three factorial into etc. n k factorial. So this is called the multinomial theorem. Okay? I mean, not multi. Uh, sorry, this is the uh, this is called multinomial coefficient. And we want to uh, we want to see uh, why uh, this is precisely this. We already saw the proof in some sense, right? we we argued it but let us make it little more formal okay so here is the proof so first consider each element to be distinct okay so by giving labels okay so we start with the uh, multi set but now the multi set has same element appearing many times right the type one object o1 o2 etc i mean like you know uh, let's say like let's say okay are there so o1 is appearing let's say number of times o2 is appearing number of times these are all objects or elements of the set and uh, okay uh, is appearing in k times right so what i am going to do is that i will make okay o1 to be o1 dash o2 dash etc uh, no no <laughs> o1 dash i mean o1 o1 1 o1 2 o1 3 etc o1 uh, n1 similarly oi will be oi1 oi2 etc oi ni Okay, I'm you know putting more labels to make them all distinct, right? labeled objects now. So now 
since I have n objects in total, once I do the labeling, I get exactly n different objects, right? The new labeled objects are, uh, right? So now I look at the permutations of them. So how many are there? N factorial permutations are there. After this, I do the unlabeling. So what I do is that I unlabel the n1 objects of type 1. So once I do this, what happens? Okay. So <clears throat> in general, uh, what happens is that if I, I mean, uh, if I if I unlabel, so here O1 is 3, O1, O1, 1, O1, 3, and O1, 2 are there. So there are three objects of type O1. So what I do is that when I unlabel these three numbers, when I unlabel these three, uh, what happens is that they, you know, the different things will become the same, right? So there were three of these objects. So three factorial different ways I can permute and each of them will give the different object in the labeled fashion. But once you unlabel, each of these three factorial, right, will be corresponding to the same uh, set, you know, uh, we were looking at. So therefore, uh, uh, that is over counting, right? So similarly, OI be the type I object. We have labeled them as OI1, OI2, etc., OI, NI to make them distinct. Now, among the n factorial permutations, let us fix one of the permutations. Okay? Once you fix the permutation, consider the n i positions where the o i is appear. That is what we looked at here, right? The three positions where o one was appearing, and then between these fixed positions, I will not change the positions, but I can permute the copies of o i, right? O i one, o i two, etc. O i n i were there. These guys, I can permute them between themselves. They will all lead to the same. Uh, ordering that we were looking at because when we are looking at the unlabeled ordering, right? So they were contributing how many times NA factorial permutations were giving the same thing. So therefore, the overcounting they permuted N and a multiple of NA, NA factorial. So therefore, I have to uh, discount this or by using the division principle by dividing by uh, NA factorial. So, since the in place arrangements of NI copies of Y does not depend on, uh, you know, that of the NJ copies of OJ, right? So, I, I, I look at the NI positions, rearrange them. I look at the NJ positions of the other objects, right? Not these objects. And then rearrange them there. You know, that doesn't affect here, right? For example, when we were looking at this, we were looking at uh, <coughs> copies of O1, O1, 1, O1, 2, O1, 3. So even though I permit them between themselves, no matter what, right, I will, okay, I will say that this goes here now, right, and then uh, this guy who was here will go here, and then this guy who was here comes back here, right. Now this rearrangement does not affect the rearrangement of, let's say, uh, let's say O2, right, O2, there are two of them, right. O2, 1, no, three of them again, right? So, O2, 1, O2, 3, and O2, 2, right? I can rearrange them independently because their positions are different. So, therefore, these uh, arrangements are independent. So, therefore, these permutations, NI factorial permutations are all independent. So, the total number of overcounting is N1 factorial for the first object, N2 factorial for the sec second object, and NK factorial for the last object. And they are independent, so I can multiply using the product rule. So, product of n n1 factorial, n2 factorial, etc., n k factorial is the total number of overcountings. So, therefore, now I can say that since I have overcounted every object this many times, I can divide by the division rule. So, therefore, I get n factorial by n1 factorial into n etc., n k factorial. So, that is how we prove this. Okay, so this is the multinomial coefficient. Uh, 